Uh, the very first thing that I want to talk about and illustrate is this concept of dimensions. And we're just going to go in right into the software. And I'm going to launch the Dynamics NEV business software here. We're looking at Dynamics NEV 2013. This is the R1 version. R2 is currently deployed. We will be upgrading in, in March. The concept of dimensions is best illustrated by taking a look at a chart of accounts. You'll see that this chart of accounts is very similar to lots of other chart of accounts and the fact that it's indented, but what it's missing, uh, maybe on, on, in your company, are the periods or the segments that come after. Uh, those periods or segments are how you get rich financial analysis and also a chart of account that ends up being, you know, three or four thousand lines long. The Dynamics Business System, it has a concept called dimensions. Now, dimensions are sort of like, I'll call it user-definable fields, that you can attach to customers, products, jobs, and items. So for here, in, in this example, I have a dimension called department, and inside of that dimension called department, I have a variety of different departments. When I make a transaction, I'm going to associate a dimension here, perhaps on my purchase invoice, and it will flow automatically to my one account for expense, and I'll be able to then report uh, from that one expense with a variety of different combinations and variations. The number of dimensions that you have is, is technically unlimited, and once again, it is set up on all of the master records that flow then to child records. Typically, when we implement a, a business system like Microsoft Dynamics, we'll take a look at your existing chart of accounts, and we can potentially eliminate. So here on the Canon group, which is a customer, I'm going to go here and take a look at the dimensions that I have associated. So every time that I, I uh, create an invoice, that goes against this particular customer, it's going to pass automatically three different dimensions, a sales dimension for my department, a customer group, which represents medium, and an, an area dimension. This gives you uh, the ability to create a series of different financial reports primarily. Uh, the easiest way to illustrate this, I'm just going to go into one of our technologies called business intelligence, and we're going to take a look at something called a trial balance, uh, uh, sorry, I wanted to do, well, the income statement's fine. So this income statement, um, very simple, we have a profit, and loss, revenue, cost, operating expenses with the periods going across, and then you'll see dimensions on the left-hand side. So the level of detail that you put into the dimensions allows you to do a quick analysis. So what's happening in this particular product line or company or division? And you'll see that as I begin to uh, click on what are called slicers in Excel 2010, the information around my profit and loss is automatically changing, filtering essentially as I go through. So this is the concept that Dynamics calls dimensions. It basically means that you can skinny down your chart of accounts and every transaction that gets posted through the business system, it carries with it a set of dimensions that gives you rich analysis. So the, the question of the day um, that was posed by some other people is that, well, when, when do I want to use the dimension capability in, in Microsoft Dynamics versus what Vox offers, which is the business intelligence package? So let's go in and take a look at some other areas in the business software. I'm going to go to an item, so part number maybe that you're selling. And we'll just pick on our touring bicycle as an example. And you'll see here that there are lots of different fields that potentially are available for reporting. So if I was... Uh, a materials manager, I might be interested in looking at this bicycle through a, a category code called automotive. Oh, probably should have picked a different one. 
and uh, this is this is a uh, category one called furniture, category two called desk. Now, do these need to be dimensions? The answer is no. Technically, any field that you put into the business system is eligible to be reported back out at a contribution margin level through our business intelligence. We have uh, what are called OLAP cubes that are sitting there on the SQL server. So all the information, all of your invoices and orders and shipments and items and customer information is being collected in the data warehouse and it's being sent through to this analytical cube that is being presented here in Excel 2010. You'll see on the left-hand side that I have uh, a variety of slicers. Oh, I need to refresh this. The slicers allow me... Uh, try again. The slicers allow me to do quick analysis. So I'm going to go to a different one right now. Of the source information coming from NAV. Slices allow me to do analysis. Oh, I'm going to have trouble here too. There we go. Try it again. There we go. So when I start clicking on uh, these variables, you'll see that the graphs start to change automatically. These are pivot tables from the OLAP cube that are sending information out into Excel. This gives me the capability of clicking on maybe one company, so what's happening in one company, what's happening with one type of project, maybe by year or by office. And then if I see a strange number, like what is happening with that $52, I can double click and it's going to take me down to the source level transactions. This is the capability of the business intelligence components. But more importantly, all of the fields and variables that you have within the database are eligible to be analyzed through the slicers. So slicers are dimensions inside of the business intelligence cube that go actually beyond the dimension capability from a pure financial perspective. Technically, any record in the business system is now eligible to be reported back out. And so as I go through the different tabs at the bottom, I'm going to see reports like customer contribution or territory analysis, business unit analysis, geographic analysis, profitability, top and bottom. I'll just give you an illustration here of what you can do with the OLAP cube. which is now I'm working basically within a pivot table and I can start dragging and dropping information. I can grab the dimensions that I have in the business system. I can grab my customers or components of the customers. So there I just did a customer by dimension. And then I can go up top and I can start putting in the slicers, which will give me the breakdown maybe by salesperson or by type of transaction. So using the business analytical cubes, you can get pretty much the same information that you would, at least at a P&L level, for sales and profitability. But you're not going to be able to get the same kind of flexibility um, on the expense side or on the balance sheet side. So if you are working in those two areas, you'll probably want to use the dimensions that are available within the dynamic system to give you true financial reports with segmentation. But know in the background that as long as you have a field that is available, you can report on it and you can get your sales and profitability through the business intelligence cubes. That was the first uh, question. The second one, um, we'll just talk a little bit about multi-company.